Hello YouTube and welcome to Kelly's Robot Repair. Today I am going to be fixing a dock charging situation with this uh, iRobot Roomba 650 model. Uh, I think this can happen in the 500 series, 600 series, and maybe 7. Uh, don't quote me on that because I've never actually owned one of these before. I bought this at a Goodwill for I think it was 30 bucks, maybe 25, 20, something like that. And it came with the, the, the cradle, the dock, and the power cord. And I got it home and it would not uh, charge when it got on here. It would, it would, I would tell it to go home or dock and it would find it and it would kind of reposition itself and keep trying and then it would back away and it would basically give up. So uh, what I found was that when I plug this directly in, there's a little uh, AC adapter port here. When I plug it directly into here, then this little, the little orange light on here would start pulsating. And I was able to get it to charge and I uh, found out the vacuum cleaner does work, but it just won't, won't charge on the dock. So I did a little bit of researching on the internet and I think I found the problem. Now before we get started, what you will need, there's a couple different things you can try. The first thing you can try is look at your dock and make sure it's not your dock. One of the uh, threads I read said that sometimes one of these legs can get bent lower than the other one and it isn't actually even making contact with these metal ports here. I actually plugged it in and pushed it down on them and witnessed that they were making contact and still got no orange light. So I knew it wasn't that. It could be something inside the dock, but my green light was flashing and I had a, I had a suspicion it wasn't. But just so you know, it could be that. When you've ruled out your dock, more than likely the real culprit is this right here. And I'll tell you why. What happens is there's a, they put a circuitry in here so that basically you can't charge with this and this at the same time. And you're probably going, well, how the heck could I do that? Because I have to plug that into that. True, but let's say you had two Roombas and they were all doing their thing and one of them was plugged in and then, uh, I don't know, it, it, it tried to go onto the dock. It could short out and hurt the battery or even worse. So they put a fail safe in, or let's say you just tried to charge it twice as fast. They put a fail safe in so that you can't do that. When this is plugged directly into the Roomba, it dislodges a, a connecting wire, for lack of a better term, that then makes this foot not connect, or maybe it was this one, this one not connect anymore. So you can, t you can test this really simply by getting a digital multimeter or just you know a regular multimeter if you know what you're doing. Uh, I use this one because it has a, um, a beep functionality that lets me know when I've, when I've con hit continuity. So in, what I did is I did a test, you know, I put one on here and then I touched the center pole and you can see that there's connection there. But now I test this one and I test the other, not the center pole, but the bottom flat plate, which I, I believe is the ground or the negative, nothing. You should be getting a beep, beep, beep there. Now I know this because there's a quick and easy kind of dirty method on how some people have fixed this. They've taken a tiny, tiny flat-headed uh, screwdriver, the kind you'd, you'd find in those little kits in the plastic or the, the eye, eye uh, screwdriver, eyeglasses screwdrivers, and they get underneath there and they bend that flat kind of round piece. They bend it up towards the center plug. You don't want it to touch, but they bend it up really hard and that makes it make contact inside with the wire that connects it to this. I played with it for about a half an hour and I bent it really hard. Like I've chewed up my metal in there and that's why I've decided to, to do the right way, which I'll talk about in a second. And I was able to, for a minute, get continuity in this and the dock did charge it. I didn't like that though because that thing was so bent out of shape and really bad in there. I wanted to fix it the right way, but if you just need a quick fix and you don't want to spend a couple bucks, and I really mean a couple bucks and a little bit of time, because all you need is some, some Phillips screwdrivers and this, you can, you can try and do that. Just make sure you're not actually bending that metal piece onto that piece. You want, a, you want a little separation there, but if you play with it enough, you'll probably be able to get your Roomba to charge on the dock again. But in my opinion, is it just a matter of time? Apparently a, a debris or gunk can get in there and that's what's causing it. Uh, some people have speculated that dust and stuff kind of builds up in there and causes those pieces to lose connectivity. I don't know. So what I've done is I went on eBay and I found a replacement part for the inside of this. 
It's the exact same part that's in there, and it's just a plug part. You don't have to solder or do anything fancy. You're just going to unplug the old one, plug this one in, layer it where it's supposed to be, set it inside, and put your Roomba back together, and theoretically, you should be good to go. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to take this apart one step by step, and then I'm going to go ahead and put this in, put it back together, and give it a test. Barring any issues or this part being faulty, that should fix my problem. And if so, this only cost me about $3.50 or something like that. Uh, the price could fluctuate. It might be four, five, six, but don't pay more than 10. It's really not worth it, I don't think. I mean, unless you, unless that's all you can find and you don't want to throw away your Roomba. These, these things are expensive. I got this at a, at a thrift store, but the, some of these new ones, like the 980, they're like $800. I mean, they probably come with more bells and whistles, but even this 650 was probably a couple hundred dollars, 300, 400 dollars brand new. And used, they still sell for a couple hundred bucks, I think. So if I can fix this for 20 bucks and, you know, get my carpets vacuumed and terrorize my kitties just a little bit, I'm kidding. I don't terrorize my kitties. They actually aren't that afraid of this. They follow it around. But if I can, if I can do that for 20 bucks and a little bit of robot repair, elbow grease. I'm totally down with that. That's a really cool feature. So without further ado, I'm going to cut to the chase. I'm going to flip this bad boy over. I'll change the angle of the camera for you. And I will show you how to take this apart, how to get this piece in and get your Roomba back together and working again. Let's get to it. Okay. First thing we're going to do is remove our dust bin arrow vac tray, whatever it's called. We don't need that. And we're going to go ahead and flip this bad boy over. And the next thing we're gonna do, or I like to do, is I'm gonna remove this, let's see here. Would you, I hold this down, get a little screwdriver in there and just remove this screw. I need to replace this piece, as you can see. Just gonna kinda pull that up and off like that. Place it with its screw so we remember. I'm just gonna slide it off view there a little bit. Next, we're gonna remove this little bottom tray piece. And this actually, this actually holds the batteries in and everything else, so we're gonna Use a big screwdriver here behind this, uh, for me, left wheel. And usually I like to try to do some kind of a thing where I keep like a, a chart of where the screws are or keep them in some kind of order. Uh, I don't want to go to that much trouble. Uh, I'm not sure that those are actually supposed to come all the way out. After feeling that and seeing what it is, I think it's just supposed to loosen and then uh, possibly, well, let's see here. There we go. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna actually push that back in there. So when you're when you're screwing those out, don't pull them all the way out. Just screw them enough to lift it a little bit in the back and keep them in the plastic. That way you won't lose them. Uh, but I actually pulled it out a little too much. This is my first time taking this apart, so bear with me. So again with these, just give them a couple turns, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something like that. Okay, now, this is going to lift right off. Theoretically, those should not fall out, so you don't lose them. I got a little bit of dust in there. So now that that's done, we're going to set that aside. Uh, the next thing we're going to go, go ahead and do is just pull out the battery. Uh, as you can see, it's just two contacts, so let's get rid of that. So uh, I believe the next part we want to do is this uh, bumper here. So this is going to take quite a bit, so maybe I'll fast forward this for you, and I'll go ahead and pull all these screws out while you watch. Okay, so we're taking out the last screw here. As you can see, this little rim here is coming right off. There we go. Now, in theory, whoops, I was gonna say when we turn this over, you can see my little clip came out, but now we know how to put that back in. This comes right up off here, and our little sensor has a wire there, so we're gonna be careful about that. Uh, it looks like I could unscrew that, but I'm not sure that we wanna do that just yet turn this back over. I just wanted to have a look-see at it. Boy, this needs a little cleaning too. Um, I cannot see that wire going into there, so I am going to attempt to unscrew this just to make my life a little easier so I don't have this bumper banging around. I'm going to put those up near the top of the camera stand there so that I know where they came from, the top of the Roomba. And just as I thought, that comes undone nice and neat. Let's get that screw out of there so we don't lose it later. Now I can get that out of there. 
and that's just our little blinky light. Okay, oh boy, this, boy, this could use some dusting when I'm ready to put it back together. Okay, so now that we've done that, looks like we want to probably take out this piece next or the wheels next. Let's go for the wheels next. Looks like we got to screw down in this hole here. And that's the great thing about these Roombas is they're quite modular. If one of your wheels breaks, you can just order that wheel and a couple of screws later, you're back up and running. It's, it's not that hard. And, and you could probably use this dissection video uh, for, for replacing other parts. This is just kind of my, my delving into the 650. Like I said, this, this is actually the first time I've taken this apart. So I'm learning as I go. And any mistakes I make, you will see, and then you will know not to do that. So you are getting to benefit from that. And there you go. These screws, I believe, are the type that you don't take out all the way. That's what it felt like anyway. So I'm going to leave those in there. I like it when the companies do that because it's a lot less likely you're going to lose lose the screw. And yeah, that you can see this. There's just this little this little motherboard piece with the teeth here, and it just plugs right down into this piece here. So that's just a really great modular design on their part. Um, Nice job, Roomba. Then again, that's also why you know you pay that much money for these because they uh, they spend a little more money designing them and paying for parts in them to make them quite modular and very cool. So I don't know exactly how many turns it takes to get these out, but it's not a ton. Dude, I'm, I'm stuck on this one here. And there we go. And that foot's out. Okay. We are almost done here. And the reason, I guess, why we do that is because I believe when we pull the top off, these pieces might go off with it. We're going to see. Uh, lastly, we're going to do this and probably that. So let's start with this one. Here's to hoping we have those same type of screws that don't need to be undone all the way because that's just a pain in the butt. Okay, now this should hopefully lift right out. I'm open. Okay, it looks like we're still bound by a screw over here. There we go. Voila! And am I right about these? Yes, those screws are not falling off. So those four screws are also mounted in their plastic. Very nice job there, Roomba. I'm very happy about that. Okay, it looks like we are gonna take this guy off here. I will probably take a few minutes to dust all these parts off. As I said, I bought this used. Oh, do we have a problem there? No, maybe not. I bought this used, and I I never really used it or cleaned it. Ah, okay. Uh, they, there's actually a, a tri-wing screw there. I don't know if it'll focus on that or not. You can see it right in there. You don't need to open that. That's just the housing for this motor. Uh, again, these two screws are the kind that. Oh no, they aren't supposed to fall out, but it did. But in theory, they shouldn't. So just be careful. Uh, when I dust it, I'm going to hold those screws down or take them out ahead of time because I do not want anything bad to happen there. Most of these pieces are only going to go back in one way, so that is a very nice feature. Let's see what we're missing now. It doesn't look like too much. I don't see too many screws, so let's turn this back over. A lot of dust is falling out of this thing. And I'm just going to reach my fingernails underneath here and see if I can't pry this up. It kind of feels like I could but I don't want to ruin anything. Okay, so there is some clips around the outside edges and around the inside edges, apparently right here, but those are not a problem. I think the clips that are getting me are inside here, and I'm gonna to try to do this delicately without breaking it if possible. Doesn't seem like it wants to come out. Maybe just a little bit of Nope, doesn't like that. I hate it when this happens. Uh, you can see other people do this online and theirs just snaps right off and then yours is like super intensively strong in the center there. And I, I like I say, I don't believe it's screwed in. I think it's just clips that are just really strong. And yeah, it looks like I've gotten one right here. So I'm gonna just gonna try to feed off of that. Maybe. Maybe use a smaller screwdriver to kind of push them in a little bit. I would prefer not to break the faceplate, but this one is being extremely difficult. Like I say, you can see how there's an edge of a clip, you know, right here, and it clips on here, and they here, 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 but I think it's around the circle here too, and it's just being extremely difficult. And I don't like to force things, but sometimes 
you just got to be a little rough with them but this thing is not uh is not giving me any kind of play i mean it's not giving me any kind of relief at all it's just fighting me to the last tooth and nail here Yeah, I hate it when things are built like this. They're like, oh, nobody will ever need to take this apart. Never. Okay, that's that's good forward thinking, but not really true. You know, and I'm not missing any screws here, so it, it has to just be plastic clips that are just totally entrenched. Can I do it this way? Ah, there we go. That might be the secret there, is to wedge a little flat-headed screwdriver down in there and just kind of wiggle it around a little bit. Maybe not. Maybe not, I could be wrong. Oops, I think I clipped one back down over here. That did not help my cause. Wow, this is brutal. I gotta say though, it really is feeling like it's not not making like it feels like there's something here that's locking it down because I don't I don't see anything on the edge here unless I'm missing one I keep clapping other ones back down so that's that's never any good ah okay so I finally got this edge one here it's, it's these edge ones they are difficult what I'm gonna do is stick a screwdriver in there because what happens is you get it out and then it comes back up again and it makes your life pain in the ass Okay, we've made a little headway here. This thing is brutal. It is really brutal. You can hear them clipping, and I'm trying to do this in such a way that they're not gonna break, but let me tell you, boy. Wow, okay, so that's what I would recommend if doing that. Take your time. I don't think I broke it, but maybe I did. I don't know. What's this? Why is this being difficult for me? Okay, some kind of handle or something. Um, I don't see. Well, maybe not. It's possible I might have broken that one right there. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, let's. Here's the easy thing to do: is just flip it right down. Okay, nothing obvious fell out, so maybe I didn't break it. I don't know, but those. Those damn things were in there way too hard for my liking. But we finally got it off. Take your time. And boy, everything should be easier, but it isn't. Now you can see with our with our main plate here, let's see. This thing, I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it looks like maybe these two screws hold it in. So let's just, uh, let me see, where's my bigger screwdriver? I like to use bigger when I can. Gives me a little more leverage, makes it easier to pull it out. I'm just going to go ahead and pull those out. We're close to getting this faceplate off and getting this done. Okay, so now let's see if this... Okay, I'm not sure exactly what this is. It looks like it's some kind of a handle, but I couldn't tell you. Uh, we're going to take the rest of these screws out now. I'm going to put these two over here. If I have to watch my own video later, they are the ones that went here. The rest of these, since they're... Wow. They are of different sizes. It looks like almost all of them are the same size with the exception of this one right here. It's much smaller. The screwdriver is too big for those holes. So we are going to go ahead and switch back to my smaller one. I don't know if there's any of these that don't need to be unscrewed. So I'm going to try my best. Now, I can see how this, you know, could appear quite overwhelming if you're not really good at doing this kind of thing, but so far the worst part was getting this piece off. As long as you, if you really want to be thorough, as you can see I'm laying my screws kind of out in a diagram and, and how I took them out. As long as you, you know, put pieces of paper and maybe if you really want to be thorough, draw out where all the screws go, that's really the biggest risk in doing something like this is losing, uh, losing track of where the screws go and then and the worst part is getting something back together again and you have an extra screw and you have no clue where it goes and you're like oh crap like that's just the worst feeling but there's not a lot you can do about that so 
like I say, you can get pieces of paper and make up quick little mock drawings and then, you know, do that. Or you could take pictures. Sometimes I take a picture of what I'm taking apart before I finish taking it apart. Okay, so these all go there. So I'm gonna slide those out of the way and these two are up there. Uh, that's going to help me a lot not be confused. I really wish I had my bigger bit here. Maybe I can back these out enough. They make the hole small, but the head is big enough that my bigger screwdriver with better leverage will really take those out without much trouble. It's not sliding in and out, but I, I couldn't quite get it in the hole all the way, or at least I couldn't down on this end. But up here, it seems like it's working okay. And this is just about our last screw here, right here, that I can see anyways. Now, one of the videos said, once you do that, you put your thumbs here and you lift but that's not working for me. That is not working for me. So let's see, what am I doing wrong? Oh, there we go. You have to kind of put your fingers under the very edge of this here. Not here, but the very edge of the plastic here when you lift. Because you're lifting, you're lifting this thin little shell off. So you want to put your fingers under this part, not the whole thing. And then just, you put your fingers in the black areas and you just lift it off just like so. All right, we're getting pretty close here. Uh, well, I guess that uh, little screw here in the center, this really tiny one, if you can see it, was holding that on. And apparently that on as well. And be careful when you take this off. I just noticed that this piece in here can fall out. You don't want to lose that. Uh, that's your little readout, so you can program your vacuum. Okay, now we can see here that the wire we want is right here so just removing this screw uh, let me use the screwdriver so you can see just removing this screw it'll slide right out and then it runs up into here so we do have to take this off to plug it in but we are really really close and luckily the color coding of the wires looks to be about the same so I think we got the right part and everything so let's go ahead now and uh, I guess we'll do these I'm gonna use my bigger screwdriver again we are getting close here. Yeah, see, it just barely fits in those holes. But I just get so much better leverage with it. I'm, you know, part of part of doing a, a good job on taking things apart is having the proper tools. When you don't have the proper tools, the work gets tougher, you struggle more, and you ruin things, and then just, you know. Some, some people will say it's not the, the tool that makes the the man, but I will say sometimes the proper tool helps a damn lot. Okay, so now that we've taken that off, uh, there is some stuff here. We don't need to, I don't think we need to touch this too much. You can clearly see now that what we want is right here. Here's our replacement and it's just gonna go right in there and we're gonna feed it into that channel. So now let's just take a look here. If you can see, we can see that as we lift the plastic, there's our plug. It runs through here and it runs above the first post, under the second, and then it runs under those other two, follows all the way over, under this fourth one, then above the fifth and below the sixth, and then down into its little spot. So we're going to take this off. This little screw here, I don't know if you can, if you can even see in there. I'm not sure how the angle of the camera is looking here. And we're gonna set that right there. I got a lot of parts laying out, so I'm gonna put this back together again as soon as I can. Um, this is just gonna come right off. I'm gonna take it off to make my life easier. But again, don't lose that. So now, we should be able to just, it's kinda hard with my, f my fingers to get in there, so I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to kinda help pry that up, and there you go. There you go, I'm just, now be careful, don't yank, because these little, these little metal wires here, they're kind of fragile, they're soldered into the board, so you want to, you want to try to carefully hold those while you dislocate this one, or take it out, there you go, see, you don't want to yank, because if you ruin that, then you're going to have to do some soldering to put it back in, but as you can see, this is the old part, and you can see this is the new part, they are identical of course this one scratched up a lot more because I was really fighting and I don't even know if you can see down in there I'll see if I can get a close-up of that and overlay it but it, it's looking pretty bad and just looking on the back of these I mean they I'm not gonna say that uh, well actually I don't know if you can see I'll bring them up there nice and close they look identical and my replacement part on the eBay auction it said used it looks pretty nice. I don't know. Maybe they had a, maybe they had an iRobot that broke down and they took it apart and they sell all the parts. But I can see there's some glue on here. 
yeah, right there on the top, right there where my finger is pointing, you can see it does say iRobot. So I do believe that I have ordered an official part, although this part is so minuscule, there's no chips or proprietary anything. I think even if you bought a third party China knockoff, it probably would work just the same. So we're gonna take this old part and throw it across the room as far as we can, because we don't want it. This is our nice new one. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna layer this down in there, see if you can see it. You'll see that there's a, there's a, see this, this tracking right here? There's like a little um, channel. I'm gonna use my small screwdriver right here. There's a piece of plastic in here. You can see it right there. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but we wanna slide it right down on that channel so it's, it's in there nice and secure. Oh, I'm sorry, not that one. It's hard for me to see. These two right here. Do you see these two pieces right here? It's really close. And that's basically to hold it into place when you plug stuff in. So we're just gonna, Put it right above there. It's kind of difficult, but it's not, it doesn't take a lot of force. And there you go. Now I've slid it right down in there. Now you can see that it's lined up on the channel there. So when I plug something in there, it's not going to go anywhere. And the screw that we tighten it down with here is actually going to further give it tension so that it's nice and s solid in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in right now. By the way, a magnetic screwdriver, this one isn't that magnetic, but it, it works enough. They're worth their weight in gold when you're doing something like this because if you drop the screw in there, you fight with it. And again, like I say, proper tools help make the job. We're just gonna tighten that down and tighten that down. And as I'm tightening it down, it's actually pushing the jack down pretty tight. And now the jack is in there, nice and snug, and we should have no problems with that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we have our nice new jack in there. It's locked down in there, nice and snug. Now we're gonna tuck the wire back in the channel, and I believe it was, I believe it was over this one, under that one, under those three, over that one, and under that one. I believe that was the pattern. And then we're just gonna plug it back in there like that. Remember, hold it as you plug it in, because you don't wanna just push on this plug here because it's you're gonna cause those solder joints to possibly break, and then you're, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Now I think what you wanna do here is I think like I said, you want to go over this first pole here, over the top of it, then under these three, and I believe under this five, and then over six and under the seven. And you're going to want to tuck your excess cable down here. You're not going to want too much extra cable on this side. So you'll, you'll probably play with this for a few minutes, getting it to be the way you want it to be. You know, just tug it with the screwdriver a little bit. But you want your excess cable down there, not in your, in your pathway here. So now that I've done that, we are ready to put this back together. So, first thing we wanna do is put our plastic back on. I'm gonna give it a little wipe down here. And as we can see, there's holes in the plastic and the square and all that stuff should line up. Make sure everything is where we want it to be. Okay, once we got our plastic down, I believe the next piece was this little guy. And uh, you can see that these are gonna to have to line up with these buttons. And there's, there's buttons all along here. So, I believe that these, uh, Plastic gob jobbies right here will line up with these four, so it should should line up and fit right into place. You can see it doesn't move a lot, so we're gonna go ahead and put that on there. And I believe it was these four screws in my side here. I don't know if you can see them, but this is why I love to kind of keep stuff grouped. The worst thing you can do is throw all your screws into one area, because then you gotta try to sort them out, and it's, that's just a nightmare. So another trick I like to do, if you haven't done a lot of repair work before, is sometimes if you just put a screw in and start screwing, it'll go in at a wrong angle, and it's really tight, and you're kind of ripping the plastic to shreds. A trick I use is I reverse the screw until I hear it go pop right there, and then I start screwing in. Once you hear it go pop, it's like the, the threads have fallen back into place. And then usually nine times out of 10, the screw will go in nice and smooth. And I'm just gonna kind of finger tighten these, not that tight. They don't need to be, you know, crack your plastic tight. But if you use that little trick where you reverse till you get the little kind of click, it'll go in nice every single time. That is a, a wonderful trick I've used about screwing into plastic. I don't know about into things like wood or metal, but I have had many screws go astray Many screws go astray because I just tried to put them in and immediately start screwing them in. So if you, if you do my trick and you start screwing and after a turn or two it starts getting tough, back it out and try again. Because the worst thing you can do to plastic is to just force that screw in all the way because what you're gonna do is you're ultimately gonna strip that plastic and then you're, you're gonna be kind of hosed. Okay, so now we've got that back on. Uh, I believe the next piece was, I believe this. 
And I've got it upside down. You can tell because the if you can, I don't know if you can see through it or not, but there's some there's some numbers here. They need to line up with those. So that's the way that that is supposed to go. And am I doing something wrong here? Actually, it might be easier just to lay that on first. There we go. Yeah, lay that on first. Lay the overlay on first because I guess mine was slightly off and it was causing the little the little sides here not to click down. Okay, now that that's done, got my little yellow ring here and I'm going to just polish it really quickly on my shirt because I don't care. Oops, I've got it upside down. You want these little L ledges to be face down when you do this. Okay, nice. Now... Believe next is this. It's a little dirty. I'm gonna give that a wipe down. Although that's a lot easier to clean because it uh, it's it's exposed all the time, so that's not as big of a problem. No wait, I'm sorry. That's wrong. That is not the right piece. I am leading you astray. It's because my pieces got out of order because I went out to vacuum them. It is this piece. Sorry, I apologize for that. Which also needs a wipe down. Again, my first time, so go easy. All right, now we gotta make sure, I believe that that wire gets fed out through here. See this little niche here? I'm thinking it, I'm thinking it goes through there, but let me, let me just take a look-see here. And this should not have to be forced on. This should just kind of slide down into place here. Um, it'll take you a few tries. I think there's, there's, see these little, these little tracks here? I think they're on, they're on both sides. You'll notice that the vacuum itself has little ledges for those, and I think they need to line up and slide down on those. So just take your time with it. This is more of a, oh boy, I was dusty. This is more of a crucial piece to not get wrong, otherwise your, your cover won't sit on nice and, and flush. So I'm gonna take this around front. Oops, ah, I did it. Now I did it. I lifted my track out of there and I don't wanna do that. There we go. I'm trying to do this the right way. It's, there we go, okay. So uh, maybe I'm wrong about this little slit here because there is room for this to stick out. So I don't, I don't think it, maybe it doesn't actually come out the top here in this little P-shaped thing. I'm gonna see about that, but I don't think so. Okay, so now you heard mine kind of click down into place, so I believe that is proper. We have my two screws over here, which I believe went to here. And then I have my bottom set here and my top set up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting those back in. I'm gonna start with my littlest one so I don't get it confused. And that was the one that basically held on my yellow ring right here. It's slightly smaller than the rest. You can see as I'm backing it out. Now, some of these you can't quite hear the click, you just have to do it by feel. Right there, I felt a nice, just a slight little like kind of doop. You'll just feel it kind of dip a little bit. And that's when you want to do it. And you can see it went right in, nice and good. Let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. These must be here, is what I'm guessing. So we'll take the bottom right one. Just gonna back it out until, now see sometimes you'll get this kind of wobbly thing where it doesn't want to, work and you just kind of have to what I'll do is I'll hold it with my fingers to get it straight and sometimes it just, you just there's nothing you can do sometimes you just kind of have to go in with it. but now see that one's kind of rough it's getting kind of rough on me so I'm gonna back it out right there and I felt a small little click and that's a little better sometimes it's not always perfect the trick does not always work so you know take it with a grain of salt when it works it's great when it doesn't work you just have to kind of improvise you know, I'm not feeling it on this one. If you can't feel it, it's best to try to get that screw as straight up and down as possible before going in. Don't let it be tilted because you're basically forcing it. And this again, is this, these holes are slightly too small for the size of screwdriver that I'm using, but this screwdriver really has the leverage to drive these in nice. So I'm gonna finish them off with the little one. And just kind of get them going with the big one. It gives me a little bit more, a little bit more leverage there. So now that they're in, I'm just gonna give them a nice little finger tightening with this little one. You know, I don't, I don't have a ton of screwdrivers, so I'm, I'm sure there's probably one that's slightly bigger than this, but not as big as that, that fits in here nicely. Actually, I do have one more. Let me see. I can get it in one second.
I don't think these will be any better. All right, there. I don't think it'll be any better, but let's try it. These are these are Home Depot 79 cent ones. Oh yeah, these are better. And these do these do they they don't fit too much better than this, but I think just enough. But this is just your average blue screwdriver you can get at Home Depot for like a dollar ten or ninety cents or a dollar fifty or these are great just in disposable screwdrivers. I bought like four of them to keep them in different areas of my house so I don't have to run all over to get them. They're just they're great for that. So I believe these other two screws down here were probably for here. I should have put them up here, but I didn't. So I live and learn. Just get it as straight as I can. Remember, not too tight. I don't have any tension, you know, measuring screwdrivers. So it's just kind of, just you just have to kind of use your judgment, but you shouldn't have to be really cranking down on it. You can see I'm just kind of lightly speed turning. And when I get a little resistance, I just give it a, an extra pound or two of pressure to get it to get it in there nice and snug but you don't want to break anything I mean basically now with this screwdriver you can see I kind of frayed my plastic there because that screwdriver is not exactly the right size but this little guy has just got too small of a sharp head and it's again not the right tool for the job as I was as I was saying early on and it makes it a little more difficult and I don't really care about a little frayed plastic there that's that's not a big deal for me but I prefer not to do that if I have the choice, but it isn't going to hurt nothing. Back in it. There we go. I felt the click. Very nice. Very nice. It is a great trick when it works. And I take apart a lot of plastic things. You know, I do video game consoles and I've done toy plastic guns and remote control cars and things like that. And it, it generally works on all of them. And it ensures that your plastic electronics will live a lot longer from not having stripped screws okay now these two guys back here i believe were the shallower ones that go in here i think they're screwing into metal backed it out a little bit and then straightened it up all right so now we know where that goes I believe now that those are all back on, let me just give them one more quick check to make sure they're nice and snug. Yep. Yep. Actually, I was using this one, wasn't I? Yep. 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 This is kind of overkill, but I hate putting things back together and I missed a screw or one of them's just not snug enough. But this should not be the case. Okay, I think we're good to go. It looks like I got all the screws in. You can see them, remember? This was the tiny one and all the rest of them were the same except for these two. They were a little bit shorter, I believe. So now, uh, I hate to put this back on because it was such a pain in the butt to get off. This might be the only reason that this raises is so that you can get that underneath there. I don't know. Not a big fan of plastic that they have to clip into place or a clipping system that is so fragile that it can break now you can hear it click 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 like all around through here you can hear it snapping in but the big points are here 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 and here and the rest of them are just kind of little not a big fan of that system in any case or you know scenario i've taken apart tv remote controls and and those are a pain in the butt i i just hate those kind of things but it's the nature of the beast it is what it is uh i believe the bumper is the next piece to go on and this is kind of a lengthy piece so I may cut this short so you don't have to sit there and watch it. Okay, I hope I'm in the channel there. So it's getting a little tough. Luckily, I bet these bumpers are pretty cheap to replace if you if you do strip or over screw a screw in there. Okay, so now I don't know if I did this right or not. Let's see. I think it's okay. I, I don't remember how much it's supposed to compress. So I guess I'll run it a couple times and if it doesn't work, then I take it apart. That won't be too hard to fix. Uh, in my opinion, that won't be too hard to fix. Okay, so next, let's pull some of these hairs out of here because that's just kind of gross, but you know, is what it is. The vacuum, it's, if you've ever cleaned a vacuum before, you're not gonna come out with shiny clean hands. That is for sure. I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me do that for an hour, so I'm just going to put this rubber thing back on. One of these little rubber 
things came off. So just, just push it back on if that happens. Make sure they're all in place. You want your Roomba to operate correctly, so it's got to be reassembled correctly. So the next piece we're going to be putting back in is the middle piece. And from before, the screws should still be in place. By the way, none of this gunk is mine. Please don't judge. Like I said, I bought this used. I haven't even actually really ran it a full cycle yet because I wanted to see if I could fix the docking problem before I decided if I was going to keep it or not. Assuming that this fix works, I of course will keep it, but if it doesn't work, not having the docking feature is kind of an important ability because the robot can, did you hear that nice click? The robot can recharge itself by simply returning to its dock. And that means you can set it up to vacuum on Monday, Friday, Sunday, and then you don't have to do the vacuuming. But if you have to, uh, there it is, the click. If you have to manually plug this thing in on the side every time, I mean, sure, it's still a nice automatic vacuum, but every single time, that could be annoying. Plus, ooh, that one's not, not getting the click on that one. No, I'm just going to try my best. Plus, if my battery is... No, nope, that's not right. If my battery is going, um, you know, if it's not in quite as good a shape as it should be, the thing might have to... There it goes. The thing might have to go and recharge itself halfway through its cycle. And I don't actually know how smart these are. Will it vacuum half my room and go, oh, I need power and return and charge and then start back up and finish later? I don't know. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool if it was smart enough to do that. But that might be asking too much, and I'm aware of that, so... All right, uh, these wheels are specific, so you can't accidentally put one in backwards. And remember, this just needs to kind of click down. And again, these screws should still be in there. Uh, let's see, we gotta get this in there straight. There we go. There we go, feel that, did you hear that little click? That was me pushing it down, so now it's reinstalled. These vacuums are wonderfully built. I mean, in terms of what they are. A friend of mine purchased a Bob Sweep vacuum he got his used at a thrift store as well five bucks for his but in all things you get what you pay for the bob sweep internals were far less robust and awesome like the wheels you you can't just pull it out and swap it so easily it doesn't just click in modularly it's it was far more by the way one screw two screw three screw it was far more cheap uh, although I did I did look up some of the reviews with the bob screws or the bob sweeps and they um, they get, they get some kind of okay, I guess, reviews. I personally would never put one above a Roomba, but I'm still new to this whole thing. Maybe some of their latest models kick the Roomba's butt. I would be shocked if that was the case. I mean, the Roomba pieces, they just feel like quality. There's a nice click there. It's got shocks and springs. The Bob Sweep didn't have any of that. They really didn't. It was pretty simple, and his was flashing some error messages, and it was unfixable. This, this thing's running like a champ with, you know, the only problem being that little AC port adapter cable here, this little thing, and, and it's just because they over-engineered it so you can't double charge it. I mean, in all reality, how many people are going to try to put it on the dock and then buy another adapter and say, ooh, I want to charge this thing twice as fast? I mean, I think at that point, if you do that, you, you, you know, you void your own warranty. I get it. The engineers are like, why not? What could possibly go wrong? They didn't envision that if this ever bent or didn't work, you couldn't charge it. <coughs> down, kitty. Come on down. She's doing it again. There she goes. Stay down. They didn't envision that, you know, it, it would, if this ever broke, that it wouldn't be able to charge. Uh, I'm sure now in the later vacuums, if they're aware of this, they've redesigned it so that won't happen. But but all, in all honesty, next we're going to do the little the little sweeper motor here on the side. Again, it's modular. It's just gonna it's just gonna touch these two contacts. So as long as you you haven't lost your screws, it should just be two quick screws, and that's it. Again, I'm gonna back these out. There's a nice click there. Tighten that down. There we go. Nice click there. Tighten that down again, not, not too tight, but just tight enough. And we are on the home stretch now. So now our battery, again, it just goes down. I'm just gonna wipe these contacts. I don't know how bad this battery is. So then another nice thing is uh, these older vacs, they're not too expensive. I was actually kind of blown away by the fact that I could get a third party battery for like 20 bucks and even, whoops, even the iRobot battery is only like 35 or something, which isn't that terrible. He's telling me he's ready to come back to life. And we are almost done here. Did you hear that click? Beautiful. That trick works every time. 
course, what I mean is, hey, kitty, what I mean is every time it works, it's, it works great. But when you can't hear the click, you're just kind of on your own. There it is. Sorry for the camera shaking. The cat is not listening. Sorry for the camera shaking. The kitty keeps jumping up and messing with it. It's one of those things where you want to pet your cat, they're nowhere to be found, or they want to have nothing to do with you. But the second you start doing something interesting, they're all up in your business, knocking it over, saying, hey, are you trying to do something? Here, let me help you screw that up. That's what they do. So last piece is gonna be this, and it, it does have a hexagonal shape, so you just need to fit it on there properly. It's really amazing what it's done to the case, the, the plastic shielder. You can see it's cracking, and I mean, it's it's natural because it's just hitting it, but it's, I, it's, just, it's just deteriorating that plastic down. And, and it's funny too, because it also, it brushes past the wheel. It's an interesting design. Uh, I probably, I don't know if I can buy just this plastic plate if I want that to look nice. Of course, what's the point? It's just gonna happen again. I do need to get another one of these, but that's another great thing is the accessories are not too expensive either. Okay, this one, the back out trick doesn't work so good, so just screw in lightly. Just give it light pressure when you screw it in because you don't want to strip that piece. All right, and there we go. Go ahead and take our bin vac here. Just put it back in. Can I get that in there all the way? And that's it. It's all back together again. Okay, so we're done. We have the Roomba back together. We have our nice new plug piece in there. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to give it a test. We're going to take this, this, and plug it in. I have to, the wall sockets are over there, so I'm going to cut to that shot. And I'm going to see if this bad boy can find its way to the dock. I'll press the dock button. Whoops. I didn't mean now. He's very happy. We're going to press that dock button and we're going to see if it can find its way home and charge. So let's give it a test. Okay, here we go. We've got our vacuum here. We've got our charging dock poured over there. It's such a long distance. Let's see if our fix worked or if it was all one big failure. Let's just move this away from that a little bit. Coming in for a landing. Two-niner. Yes! It worked! So, for the price of a $3, let's see, where did I put it? Piece of crap cable here. Blah. For that little $3 piece, which apparently Roomba's is crap, we now have a perfectly docking, working vacuum cleaner for, I, I wanna say I paid 25 or 30 bucks for it, which is fantastic. I am ecstatic to have this little piece fix that. It took a little bit of work, you know, it was about, it was longer for me, 45, 50 minutes to actually make the video. But if you're just doing it on your own, you don't have to worry about all that and you've got this piece, there's probably other videos if you wanna take it apart faster. I know I ramble a little bit and I don't have as many edits, but I'd rather be slower for somebody who's not as good at it so I'm, you're not going so fast. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, you don't have to keep pausing the video. And it did in fact work. I would recommend it. If you've got it and it won't dock or find it, see, the kitties aren't terrified. They, they love it. If you've got it and it won't dock, this will get it to the dock and have it charge itself. And it was a great fix. I'm very happy. And now I'm the proud owner of my first Roomba uh, 650. And that's it. So thanks for watching. All right. The robot repair worked. And our little droid unit is ready to go. We can get some carpets clean now and give the kitty something fun to chase. And all it took was a little $3 part, a little bit of time, and my Roomba's back up and running 20, 30 bucks later and I got a nice little automatic sweeper that will find its way to its dock and charge itself. So until my next video, whether it's a repair or one of my rambling reviews, stay tuned and thanks for watching. And please, if you want, leave some comments below. You can ask questions. I don't know a whole lot. This is my first Roomba, but I do like to fix things and, and kind of, you know, get in and 
muck around. So if you have any questions that I can answer, I will do my best to do so. Thanks for watching and see you next time. As you can see, no kitties are afraid of the Roomba. We are friends with the Roomba. Is that correct? Yes, I like the Roomba. Now feed me.